Jesus is the light for your life, part 19, the Just Jesus Evangelistic Campaign, day 119, John chapter 8, verse 12, and then we're going to read, as this is a rather long conversation, we've dealt with every verse every theme in this passage the main theme being what we're going to read right now then spake jesus again unto them saying i am the light of the world he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life jesus is sharing with them here uh, in a positive way that he is the Son of God and that they need to believe on him. And then we move down to verse 51. And uh, Jesus tells him the same thing. And I want to bring out something here. He tells them the same thing in a negative way in the sense that he tells them that if they don't believe in him, they will die in their sins. So Jesus started out positive with them, but they kept on picking and accusing him and trying to catch him in his words. Uh, he tells them uh, in this passage, and we're not going to read all of it right now, that they will die in their sins if they don't believe in him. But look at verse 51. Verily, verily, truly, truly, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast a devil. And you can imagine how they ran back and said, Oh, now, now we know. They, they started away doing like, Now we know you have it. Rolling their eyes. Now we know you have a devil now. Now we know that thou hast the devil, Abraham is dead, and the prophets, and thou sayest, If a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. See how they switched the words? Jesus said, See death, and they said, Taste of death. That's what folks do all the time. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead? And the prophets are dead, whom makest thou thyself? Holy Father God, we praise you and we thank you for your glorious gospel found in your four gospels and in other places in your holy scriptures. Thank you, Lord, so much for putting us on this journey. And Lord, I would be full of regret if I had refused to do this. Uh, it is one of the highlights of my life, and I give you the glory, praise, and honor. Thank you, Lord, for giving me the privilege and the joy to preach the gospel. Thank you, Lord, for the thousands who have heard the gospel preached through this poor preacher, and thank you, Lord, for those who have believed on you. We pray that millions more would hear the gospel and that millions would be saved. We pray that believingly because we know that nothing is too hard for you. Nothing is impossible with you. So Lord, uh, let your will be done.
For indeed it is your will that you are not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And so, Lord, have your Holy Spirit to take your Holy Word and carry it to the four corners of the world, to every nation in 100 languages and for the deaf and uh, on multiple platforms. Lord, open blinded eyes, unstop deaf ears, and save mil millions of souls before it is eternally too late. And uh, Lord, revive your Christian people as well. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> John Knox, the great uh, preacher of the past, said, Live in Christ, live in Christ, and the flesh need not fear death. Amen, somebody. As I mentioned yesterday, if a trusted, knowledgeable, respected individual told you in all seriousness without a duping the light grin on their face without a turned up lip a lying grin that they had found a way for a person to live forever you would feel compelled to hear them out <clears throat> If Brian Williams told you that, you would not believe him. But if Wolf Blitzer told you that, you, you might want to listen. If what they said made sense and even had the slightest possibility of working, you would be interested. Uh, you might even be excited. No one wants to die if they have any sense, if they're normal, normal people do not want to die. But some people today have voluntarily had their bodies, have voluntarily had their bodies frozen so that at some time in the future when scientists have found a way to preserve life beyond the normal human lifespan, they can be reanimate it, if you will, and pick up living where they left off. Of course, that will not work, and we can save them a whole lot of trouble if they would just call me, and I would tell them that the Bible says, God says, it is appointed unto men once to die. And after this, by the way, the judgment. you got to get up out of here. And uh, when you go back to re, so quote unquote, reanimate these folks, they'll be dead. So of course that will not work. But the prospect of living forever is certainly attractive to most people. If they have any sense, everybody would want to live forever. This is why the response of the Jewish religious leaders to Jesus' statement that those who follow him will not see death is quite baffling to them. They just ran back, oh, no, nah, I know you got a devil now. I, we know it. I've been telling you. I've been trying to tell you folks this man got a devil and, 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 and that he's possessed by the devil. Now he's talking real stupid right now. And they say, now we know that thou hast a devil, the audacity of these religious leaders. These religious leaders feel certain that this claim of being able to prevent people from dying is proof for their previous accusations that Jesus is demon-possessed. They go on to say, Abraham is dead, and the prophets are dead. And thou sayest, if a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. You see how they twisted Jesus' words? Jesus didn't say taste of death. He said see death. 
And I dealt with that last night. If you didn't hear that message, get the tape. Or just go uh, to the internet, go to our sites, and you'll see it there. Just type it in, in Google. At first, it seems as though the religious leaders are angry about Jesus claiming to be able to make people live forever. Now, before you judge these religious leaders, you would have been worse. You would have laughed Jesus to scorn. Man, get out of here with that, man. Man, the prophets are dead. Abraham is dead. Uh, you ain't better. You're not better than they are. They, they, they saw death and tasted death. What are you talking about? But that is not what they are primarily upset about here. Uh, their primary problem in their minds is twofold. We are going to look at the first issue today, and if the Lord tarries is coming and we live, the second issue tomorrow, as we continue through this uh, rather long passage. But first, note how quickly these leaders have twisted Jesus' word, just like Satan, just like uh, some media personalities. As Adam Clark points out, Jesus said that the one who keeps his word would never see death. That is, face to face. They claimed he said that this one would never taste death. The believer will indeed taste death. Those of us who are saved will taste death. But we are not terrorized by death this defeated foe amen somebody those of us who are truly born again those of us who are saved i don't know about you before i got saved death scared the living daylights out of me i wanted no parts with funerals and when people died in the neighborhood when people died in the neighborhood next door across the street and stuff like that that freaked me out for days I said they're dead what I was afraid of death I thought death tried to say something to me just a minute ago uh, I, I was afraid of death that I mean that I just couldn't understand this thing called dying but when I got born again, got saved, December the 19th, 1979, that fear of death uh, left me. And I've had nothing but peace ever since. And now that I'm older in the Lord, I look forward to the day that I leave this place called Earth, which I call also the sin-cursed place called Earth. Beloved, when Jesus died on the cross... He removed the sting from death so that for the believer, death is not the destination. It is just a vehicle to the destination called heaven to be with God. And the first reason why the Jews are so up in arms is the fact that Jesus said, if a man keep my saying, Jesus was claiming some authority for himself that the Jews were not willing to submit to or to give him as proud and as arrogant as they were, they would never dare tell people to keep and abide by laws of their own making. They always tried to tie their laws and religious regulations back to Abraham, Moses, the prophets, and other Jewish forefathers. But here Jesus says people should obey him and live by his words based on the fact that they come from him alone. Of course, the Jewish religious leaders knew that the only way Jesus could seriously make such a claim and expect people to obey it was if he were claiming to be God. 
or that the very least or at the very least be the mouthpiece for God as the prophets of old were. But he was claiming and had made it clear that he is the light of the world, that he is the Son of God, that he is Emmanuel, God with us. The problem was that this voice of God that came from Jesus conflicted, conflicted rather, with the way they had been running their establishment religion. <coughs> Pardon me. If Jesus really is God, or at least speaking on behalf of God, or is the Son of God, then they would have to obey him if they wanted to experience eternal life. And, and, and what would they have to obey? The, the commandment that Jesus talked about uh, just a few chapters back in this same book. The main thing that God wants you to do is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ for your salvation. Amen, somebody. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. The Jewish religious leaders did not want to change their lifestyle and begin obeying Jesus, thus obeying God, obeying his gospel, uh, meaning they needed to trust in Christ and start obeying his word. That is the real reason they perpetrated this bogus claim about Jesus being demon possessed, which is borderline blasphemy. That is the length to which a corrupt human heart will go when they have been so blinded by Satan, the betrayer, Satan, the first Judas. Uh, Satan who betrayed God Almighty, that they would rather remain in their sin than grasp the only thread of hope that has been offered them in order to gain eternal life. Do you know what, folks? I believe many people go to hell because of pride. I am afraid that many people go to hell because of religious pride. That's not what my mama and them told me. That's not what my, uh, my dad was. My granddaddy was a, a bishop in the so-and-so church, and they taught differently. Uh, that's not what the uh, minister says down in the Jehovah's Witness. That's not what the Mormons teach, and they, they, don't hold, and they hold on to uh, garbage that they have heard throughout their lives instead of submitting to the truth. And they end up going to hell because of religious pride. How about it, dear friend? Are you in that category? For you too have a choice to make. You must decide whether you love your current lifestyle more than you desire to escape death. And not uh, see death. Not be afraid of death and not end up in the ultimate place of death called hell. But if you wish to escape death and hell, you will have to leave your current lifestyle behind and begin to uh, and first trust Jesus Christ and begin to follow him with all of your heart, mind, soul, and spirit. In so doing, you will gain eternal life by simply believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, believing that he died on the cross for your sins, was buried, and rose again. And if you truly believe in him, you will follow him. You will have to go through a period of growth and growing and learning and being discipled and so forth, but you will follow him. And yes, you will stumble and fall just like a little child. Uh, when they begin to walk, will fall flat on their face, and you will make mistakes. But you will continue to grow, and you will uh, make him your Lord and Savior, and you will follow him once you are truly born again. The Bible makes it very clear. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, 
that is, perish in hell, but have everlasting life, that is, have everlasting life in heaven with God. The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou, you, shalt be saved. That's all you have to do to begin this relationship. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9, and verse 13, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart, that God hath raised him from the dead, thou, you, shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How about it, dear friend? Are you ready to get saved tonight? Just believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and rose again. And pray with me this simple prayer. It's called the sinner's prayer. And I will lead you in it because you've never prayed it before. That's all. And uh, you just pray after me phrase by phrase so that you can be saved tonight. Holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner deserving of hell. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of my sinfulness and my sins. As I now believe with all of my heart that Jesus Christ died for me, was buried, and rose again. That he shed his blood on the cross for my sins. Was buried and rose again. Because he is the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart today and save my soul. Lord, I admit I don't understand everything. But I do understand that you died on the cross for my sins. Please fill me with your Holy Spirit. And change me from the inside out. Help me to confess my sins. And to repent of them. And to follow you in the new life. In Jesus Christ's name I pray and for his sake. Amen. Just now come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Just now. Just now come to Jesus. Come to Jesus, just now, He will save you, He will save you, He will save you, just now, just now, Jesus save you. Jesus will save you just now. Dear friend, tonight if you believed in your heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose again, that he is the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world, allow me to say to you congratulations on doing the most important thing in life, and that is trusting Jesus Christ as your Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to GospelLightSociety.com and read what to do after you enter through the door. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Dear friend, God loves you.